myself, my sisters, Antonia is the oldest sister, Regina, she's the middle sister, and myself, I'm the younger sister. We also have three other brothers, one of our brothers, Edwin James, he's also on the line. And we just thank you so much for joining us. And I'll just pass it right back to Tony. Awesome, awesome. Well, we are not gonna delay because today we have our sister, our blood sister. We've had other, other people as guests on our platform, but we today have our blood sister. So we're excited about that. Let me share, Dr. Regina Red is a wife, mother of three children, and assistant principal with Posen Robbins School District. She has a doctorate degree in educational leadership from the University of St. Francis. She received a master's degree in community counseling from Roosevelt University, which has built her capacity to work with children and families. She is passionate. You guys are gonna hear this, it's gonna come out. She's passionate about building resilient children. So Dr. Red, take it away. Oh, wow. Uh, wow, that introduction was amazing. Um, let me just say that I am excited about today and I'm actually letting a few more parents on as I speak. So if you could give me a moment while I let a couple more parents on. And um, what this basically, was put together for was so that we could have an honest conversation about things that affect all of us. And yes, these are my sisters, blood sisters. We grew up together. Um, we enjoy spending time together and we were uh, honestly blessed to have a mom that was very, very involved. So it's almost in my DNA to be that type of parent who's involved with my children. And I just want to share. So. I, I've always wanted to work with parents, but really what we're doing today is just having a conversation on what's going to um, occur over the next couple of weeks. Our children are going to be going back to school. Uh, some of our children are going to be going back to school at home with remote learning. Some of our children are actually going to school in place. So my sisters and I wanted to present some information to the parents so that we would be able to um, just ease a little bit of the anxiety that's out there with parents and sending their kids back to school and what it's going to look like. So my sisters, Tony and uh, Leticia, they've been having series of conversations related to mental well-being and mental health. So I was just really honored when they asked me to uh, become a guest on their panel. So thank you, Tony. Thank you, Leticia, for having me today. And I am definitely floored. I'm looking at the guests that we have here with us. Um, yes, my brother Edwin is watching all the way from Tennessee. He's on right now. Um, I have a good friend, Arlanda, who's on. She's out of town watching as well. Um, I've been blessed to be a part of many networks. And these networks are what I call my village. You know, we have a village for our children, but these are my village. So I have um friends on from my book club that i've just kind of wrapped my arms around over the past uh 17 years and really mo most of the time you need a network so what we're doing today we're involving everyone so everyone will be a part of this conversation this is not going to be a, a sit back and watch type of presentation we want everyone on board to feel free to chime in so let me go over a little bit of housekeeping rules before we get started. So with Zoom, there is a chat feature at the bottom. We're asking if you could type your questions that you have into the chat and we'll be able to um, look at your questions and respond to your questions throughout the presentation. The presentation should only take about 20 minutes and then we want to be able to have some honest conversations and hear from you we want you to be able to share what are some of the ideas that you're going to be doing at home to get your families and your children ready for remote learning. Sharing is caring and we believe in sharing information. So whatever information that we can share for each other, it's going to help all of us get through this remote learning. All of us are parents. Um, we know children. If we're not parents of our own children, we have children that we have 
a love for. All of us want to see our kids succeed, right? We know that our children have experienced something that we never experienced when we were kids. The fact that our kids were completely uprooted from their comfort, which is school and teachers and that community, and then all of a sudden um, placed in a, a, a world where you couldn't go out as you really wanted to. You couldn't go to your football practices. You couldn't go to your um, violin lessons as you would normally do. Children actually are affected by coronavirus in one way or the other. So this is what the whole conversation is gonna be about. But before we get started, I would like to hear from you. So let's go around and see who is on our panel today. The name of our panel um, is Building Resilient Children. So that's what we're focusing on, building resilient children and helping our parents through remote learning. So we're gonna talk about how to build resilient children and how to build our parents' uh, remote learning strategies. So I'm getting ready to share my screen. And once again, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. And we just ask that if you're not speaking, if you can make sure that you mute yourselves. Um, when we do the share outs, I'll unmute everyone. And then there are also features at the bottom. Those are reaction features. If you have a question, you could click on one of those reaction features at the bottom of your screen, and you can either raise your hand and then we'll try to get to you. All right, so let's get started. All right. So we are building resilient children. And if for some reason you can't hear or if there's an issue, just make sure you put it in the chat so that we can make sure that you guys are still connected to us. All right, so while we're waiting, go ahead and unmute yourselves. There's a feature at the bottom where you can unmute yourself. If we can have everyone unmute themselves and we're going to go around and introduce ourselves. And there is one question that I want you to think about as you are introducing yourself. What is one area of focus that you want to um, gain from today's parent forum that you can give your children over the next six months? So what is one hope that you have for your children over the next six months? And what are you hoping to gain for today? So let me go ahead and exit this. That way we can actually see everyone. I'll stop sharing this for a moment. All right, so you can go ahead and unmute yourselves. If you haven't, I've already unmuted everyone. So go ahead and chime in. So what are some of the hopes that you are having today from this presentation? Go ahead, Tony. You know what, I'm excited. A few weeks ago when I first heard about the, the, the going back to school and what have you, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, but I'm excited. There is one thing I want to know. I want to know how to help my teenager stop grieving about losing your friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a big one. I have a teenager. Um, I'll introduce my family in a minute, but I have a teenager and I know many of you on this presentation, you have teens and teens are very, very familiar with what's going on, but we also want to really pay close attention to the teens and we'll get more into strategies on what you can do for your teenagers at home. Okay, good question. Um, anyone else want to chime in on what you're hoping to gain from either this panel or what would be your hope for the next six months for your child? Hi, Regina. Um, this is Carol. Okay, hi, um, Carol. Hi, um, I have a, uh, a teenager as well. She's going into her senior year. And um, what I want to be able to do is to really help her establish a new structure 
a, a formal structure for remote learning. Um, because, you know, when they're in person, uh, the teachers give them that structure. And being remote, I mean, as much as they can, the teachers are going to try. Uh, but I want her to be able to understand that, you know, she's got to develop uh, a formalized structure in order to be able to really, really get as much as she can out of remote learning. You know, it's not this lackadaisical, you know, oh, all I got to do is check in. Um, no, you still need to try to create a, a structure where you're really going to be able to learn and get something mm -hmm. out of it. So that's really my biggest concern and the thing that I really want to be able to help her to do. And I think the earlier I do that, the better off and the, 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 the more successful she'll be with this, this senior year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very, very um, powerful, Carol. I think a lot of us are in the same place where you are at, Carol, with our teenagers and especially our um, seniors, students who should be at this time getting ready to prepare themselves for college. So we'll have those conversations too shortly as well. Thanks, Carol, for sharing. Um, anyone else? I have a, this is Erica. Um, Hi, Tony, Erica. Thank you for inviting me to this. This is wonderful. Um, so we, so I'm on the other side. I have a, a kindergartner that mm -hmm. is going to be going into school um but his kindergarten uh routine is not going to be what we remembered which is you share you love you hug your teacher you know with your friends i got the long list of there's no sharing there's no commingling you know you have to keep you know a distance from your friends everything's mostly going to be outside so so everything that we programmed our little guy to understand of friendship and sharing and taking turns it's it's we're breaking that down so i'm, I'm just you know i know he's going to be fine but we're still going through that i feel like we're sending our child off to war mm -hmm. of t you know untangling those things that we taught him that he was supposed to do of mm -hmm. you hug you you share you you don't do that anymore so right. I don't know. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Erica. And, and with our younger students, we're going to show later on in the presentation stories that we can actually tell to our younger students to help them understand a little bit more in their way of learning. Um, why is it looking different? How is it going to look? Um, for the ones going into school, what can you tell them that they will see when they get in? It's going to look different. I know that in some school districts, um, children who are going into the building, parents will have to either self-certify, meaning they may have to do temperature checks at the door. Um, children are not used to that. They're not used to going to the door, getting a temperature check when they come into the building. Um, they're used to the norm. So yeah, you are absolutely right, Erica, for the students who are going into school, it is going to look different. So we have some videos for our younger students that we're going to see later on in the presentation. And then we have stories that you can tell to your younger ones as well. Thanks for sharing that, Erica. Um, any other parents want to share? A couple more. Hey, Hi. Regina. Hey, Tanisha. Hey. Hey, can you see me okay? I can see you fine, yeah. Okay, great. I just, well, I have two girls. Well, first of all, thanks for having this. So I have a, a senior and a seventh grader. And for mm -hmm. my senior, um, she's going to be doing the hybrid model. So two days in class in person, two days in class remote, and then one day of teacher office hours, catch up, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So she needs to learn how to be dynamic because mm -hmm. she's going back and forth and so versus remote or a hundred percent in person. So again, she needs to be dynamic and adjust on a daily mm -hmm. basis, just about. And then my seventh grader, um, she's going in 100% um, in person, um, but I think her class size will be about five or six kids um, because okay. the school is split in half with remote and in person. So I just want her to be joyful and enjoy the experience. She needs that social aspect of things because she's been getting a little sad over the last couple of months. I just want to make sure she just has the joy of, of learning and she's not nervous about being there in per mm -hmm. person. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, we'll talk about that as well. And thank you all for sharing. The, the good thing about these parent forums is 
we're sharing things that other parents are also experiencing. And I think that's what's going to help us get through this new norm. Just sharing what we're experiencing and other parents may give you all um, certain strategies and tips that they're using that will obviously help us here at home. So thank you all for sharing. And we can do one more. Well, I'd I like to oh, I share also. Oh, go sure, ahead. go ahead, Arlanda. Oh, okay. So my concern, I have a high schooler. He's going, he's going to be a sophomore. And my concern is his uh, quality of education, right? Mm -hmm. I've been noticing that the, what the supplemental education he's been getting through remote has been real simple. Like for him, he needs rigorous, right? He right. needs something challenging. So it's so easy. He'll do it very quickly and then he's done. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of feel concerned about I know it was new for everyone, but I just feel like he's not getting uh, that rich education that he needs, whereas mm -hmm. he needs more level of engagement with his teacher and more thought provoking things instead of here's an assignment, now do it, and not really feedback back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I work in Chicago and it's a little different, the level of engagement. So the teachers have those office hours, but it's more where you're giving feed, not just feedback, right? It's assisting the, the, the student or the child with the work directly. And for my son, it's just not enough. It's not robust. He becomes bored very quickly and he's becoming not engaged. So he's mm -hmm. gonna do similar to another person's uh, school, which is uh, the hybrid model and then remote and then feedback. And I'm just concerned about that. And I'm trying to figure out how to address that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for sharing that, Arlanda. And then it was one more person that was trying to also share. Yeah, LaShawn. LaShawn. How you doing, LaShawn? I am great. Um, that was one of the concerns that was just mentioned. But the other concern is, so I have a child who's going into third grade and one who's going into um, 11th grade. And so, of course, third grade, we know that that's really when the assessment begins and all of those elements so concerned about that entry point. But then with my daughter being concerned about like, these are definitely the, the times where we begin to think about the next level and getting her connected, you know, through um, higher education and things of that nature. So being able to do those things in a remote environment, mm -hmm. um, that is definitely something that's you know, kind of bothersome for me and how we're going to be able to navigate those because so many institutions, K through 12 or higher ed, they have so many different models. Um, so being able to make sure that we as parents stay on top of that um, with them learning through this uh, current uh, remote environment. So those would be the, the two key things for me. Okay, real good. Thanks, LaShawn. Um, anyone else? I see Kelly just joined us. Welcome, Kelly. All right, so we're going to get right into this presentation and um, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so building resilient children. Um, we've heard from most of the parents this morning and it seems like our concerns are the same. We just don't want our children to fail. We want our children to be resilient throughout this whole process of learning, whether it be hybrid, you're going back and forth to the school, um, learning from home, or whether it be you are strictly remote learning at home. And if I could have everyone mute themselves at this time, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. So then our objectives for today, um, we'll learn strategies to build resilient children, and then we will also learn how to help our children master remote learning, because it sounds like our children need to have some tools in their pocket to be successful with the remote learning. So I'll share with you why um, I just feel passionate about working with our children and our parents so that we're able to become successful. Um, when I worked on my doctorate degree, my dissertation specifically was about uh, parental involvement. I have three children and my three children are all spread apart. So I have a 17 year old, I have a 13 year old and a seven year old. So they're all at different developmental stages. So my initial thought with remote learning was the same as yours. How am I going to 
help my children become resilient with learning how to do work on their own without the push of, for example, their teachers in their faces all the time. Because even though remote learning will be live instruction for most children and most school districts, most of the time your instruction will be independent at some point. So that's similar to doing homework. Homework at night is typically independent because your teachers aren't there to help you. So our children are going to be doing more independent work than they were doing previously, but just doing it after school. So some of our kids are gonna to have to do independent work throughout the daytime, throughout their learning. Um, but I thought with my three kids, how could I help them become resilient? And it, it just, um, God just laid it on my heart to put these uh, parent forms together so that parents can come together and share. Because I know that if one of my friends is successful with doing something at home with their children, I'm always eager to hear how it's working. So I think with us sharing strategies is gonna help us get through this. So um, this is my story. So we've already kind of talked about what our hopes and experiences are and what we want to see our children accomplish over the next six months. Um, mine is the same. I want to see my children successful. And I think that's the overall um, concern for a lot of the parents. So how are we going to do that? We have to, first of all, learn that our children can be taught how to be resilient. We can teach them. What is resiliency? It's the ability to withstand or recover quickly from a difficult condition. So we know that coronavirus and COVID-19, this is the most difficult condition that our children have probably ever had to face because as I mentioned earlier, they have a new norm. So a lot of our children were, they're used to their structure. They were going to school in the daytime. They were coming home, going to their different extracurricular activities. Many of our children were not able to continue that type of uh, structure. So understanding what resiliency is, is gonna help we as parents help our children. So Dr. Joanne Joseph stated that the essence of a productive and healthy personality is a positive and secure self image. So helping the students and the children have a positive and secure self image and a solid set of resilient attitudes, this is helping to build their healthy personality. So we have to make sure that we're helping our children become resilient. How do we do that? Well, we do that in several different ways. And once again, let me remind you, if you have any questions, um, just put your questions in the chat as we go along. All right, so why is resiliency needed? Resiliency is needed simply because our children are affected by COVID-19. As we mentioned, school closures, loss of extracurricular activities, limited social opportunities. There is a fear that the children have that they don't talk about. They may not talk about it, but you will see it from their behavior. So you may see your children um, not talking as much, or you may see different habits begin to form. And that will indicate that, okay, they are bothered by something. And some of those, those habits could be um, overeating, <laughs> undereating, um, not really sleeping soundly at night, restless sleeping, not talking to their friends, not talking to their parents, kind of staying in their rooms. So if you notice that your children are isolating themselves, you want to pay close attention to that because that's an indication that something is going on with them and we need to talk to them to get them to share out with us. And then why is learning resilient behavior important? Because of the social emotional needs of our children. I think the most um, difficult part of children not going back to school full time is just that social piece that they will miss from being around other children. They learn social cues from other kids, they learn it from their teachers, they learn it from their school community as well. 
So social emotional needs of the children. Our children need to express themselves, obviously. Um, how do we do that though? And that's, I think the question that even I have had as a parent, how do I um, get my three children to be able to express themselves to me? Um, well, there are some things called post checks. Uh, um, these are just some um, checks that you do with your children where you um, just check their mood. How are you doing today? Um, what did you think about last night when we went walking? Um, let's watch the new Beyonce movie together as a family. If you see your children saying, you know, I don't want to watch anything. I don't want to watch any movies. That's a indication that once again, you really need to talk to your kids about what's going on within them. So those are post checks. You can do post checks by taking them out for a walk. You can take them out for a car ride, um, going into their room and sitting and just simply talking to them, taking them for a car ride where they get to just talk to you, unplug a minute, have them take the uh, AirPods off so that they can hear so that you and the children can communicate back and forth. Weekly check-ins, that's another way to do a pulse check. So maybe, and especially the parents that have multiple children, um, you may wanna spend one day with one child and then the next day with another child. So these are weekly check-ins that um, have helped and researchers also um, recommend that we do these with our children. So here are some social emotional resources that we can use with our children to help them understand what's going on with um, the world around them. And these are age appropriate. So if you have little ones at home, like your kindergarten students, you can definitely share these stories with your children. These stories are specifically meant to help them understand more so what's going on with the, in their world around them. Um, many of these stories are available for you using uh, UNICEF for Every Child. UNICEF for Every Child is just an organization that will give free resources for parents, churches, schools, Hopefully this will open. If it doesn't, then we'll try another one. We will share this presentation with you. So if we're not able to open up the presentation now, no worries because we'll share this presentation with you. So you'll be able to get into it, um, of course, at another time. All right, so let's go into another one. Let's see if we can get into this one. Okay, so the do's and don'ts of parenting your child through COVID-19. So you'll see, and this is geared to um, a lot of our older students. So our teenagers, we had quite a few parents on today who have teenagers and you're just wondering how to get your teenagers to be able to become resilient and especially understand that they really are gonna have to have a structure with going back to high school. So here's some do's. As parents, we have to check our own anxiety. So this is a huge one. If we're feeling anxious about what's going on, it's okay because we're human, that's normal. Um, however, we wanna refrain from catastrophic scenarios in our minds, especially saying them out loud in front of our children because we don't wanna um, bring fear or added fear amongst your children. So we as parents, we have to take deep breaths. We have to roll up our sleeves and whatever we do, we have to make sure that we know that um, the ultimate goal is to um, bring and create the safe environment for our children, whether it's making sure that they don't watch too much of the news. And we have to be conscious about when we're watching the news, because even though None of us would purposely sit our kids down and say, okay, here, you're gonna watch the six o'clock, the seven o'clock and the eight o'clock news. However, when, our, when we watch the news, subconsciously our children are actually hearing what's going on um, in the news. So we wanna limit that, talk to your school-aged children, but don't go overboard. So even the younger ones, they know something is off. They know something is going on. So you wanna talk to them about, um, just what's going on, reassuring them, letting them know everything is gonna be fine. We'll talk more about Google mm -hmm. for education later on in the presentation. Remind them that their power lies within them. They're powerful, 
Um, we want to make sure that they feel powerful because sometimes our children will feel powerless and helpless within what's going on in the world. So we want to build up their power and tell them that their power re relies within them. Um, use this opportunity to discuss gratitude. So just basically letting our children understand what gratitude is and then leading by example. Those are some do's. Some don'ts, having adult conversations about coronavirus in front of the children that leads to anxiety. Um, going overboard with the cleaning. I know that I'm, I clean all the time. I have to make sure that my counters are clean. I'm telling my kids, wash your hands. And that's good. We have to continue to do that. But I think what this is, is basically saying is um, you don't want to walk around your house with a uh, hazmat suit on that'll really put fear in your children. All right. Um, and then brush away your children's fears. You don't want to brush them away because they're real. You want to make sure that the children understand that those are real fears that they have. And you want to validate that. So those are just some examples. So let's get back into our presentation. So um, in addition to those resources, these are the video stories that I mentioned that you could share with your uh, children, your younger children about what's going on. So why can't I go to school is a good one for your younger kids. Um, it really gives them the visuals that they may need. So this one also talks about um, some examples of for example, why you can't go into school, um, what would be the reason, and it's more visual for the early learners, like our preschool, kindergarten, and first grade learners. So you can scroll through this. This is also available in Spanish as well. All right, and then here's another story that you could read to your children. I would say this one is geared for um, your third grade and under. So if you have any child in the grades of third and under. This will be a good story to read. Why we stay home. Susie learns about the coronavirus. So just another free resource that you can use for your children um, as we prepare to take them back to school, whether it's hybrid or full-time at home learning. Okay, so once again, as I mentioned, we are going to be sharing this presentation. So you have, you will have access to all of these resources. Um, and then these are some resources that I will share with our parents um, further along. I will also be presenting in the future to parents as well and helping our parents as we work together with remote learning as well. So the purpose of trying to build the resiliency is so that the students become successful with remote learning at home. All right, so let me Stop here and I'm going to do a temperature check. All right, so how are we all doing out there in parent forum land? So any questions so far on what we've discussed? And I'm gonna unmute everyone. I see some good questions in the chat here. Let's go to some of these questions, okay. All right, so we'll place the links in the chat box. That was a question. Yes, we will do that. And I think another question was the presentation. We'll send that out. <laughs> yes, LaShawn, ditto for the clean countertops. Absolutely, that's me all day long. All right, I'm gonna unmute everyone for a moment. Um, let's do a temperature check and let's see how everyone is doing. Any questions so far? Okay. All right. So we are going to continue with the presentation. All right. So let me share the screen and I'll go back in. All right. So remote learning at home, how is this going to look? We're all going to be watching that family learning channel. And what is it going to look like? It really depends. All of our houses are going to look different. I think the one thing that's going to bring us together is we know all of our children at some point will be at home learning. Hybrid basically means your children are going to go into the building some days out of the week, and they're going to be at home learning some days out of the week. I'm not sure if you have a, um, I think we may have had one parent that mentioned their child was going to go to school full time in person. So you may have some full time in person 
a learning opportunities where your children are actually going into the building. This will also benefit you as well as a parent. How to prepare for remote learning at home. We have to learn the digital platform that the school is gonna use. Most of the school districts are going to use Google Classroom. Google Classroom is a free platform that's out there on Google that many of the teachers use to set up their virtual classrooms. They will be putting many of their assignments onto Google Classroom. Students will be completing assignments and uploading them into Google Classroom. And as I mentioned um, in my upcoming parent forums, we are gonna actually use Google Classroom as an example to navigate through that platform. So I'll be given an example of how to go through Google Classroom, how to check their grades, how to check for assignments, and how to communicate back and forth with your teacher. Make sure that when we create our homework stations or learning areas in the home, make sure it's a safe place. I don't know about you, but I know for me, when we first went out of school back in March, my kids were working out of the kitchen. So my kitchen served as a kitchen, it served as a classroom, it was the nurse's office, it was the counseling office. Um, so this year, what I decided to do was create a specific space in the house um, in our family room downstairs where the kids will have their table and their devices. So their computers are down there. I'm giving the kids headphones because they're going to be interacting with their teachers and listening to their teachers. So having your kids wear their headphones, they won't disturb each other. Talking to your kids every day about their daily work is gonna be very crucial to being successful with remote learning. And then making a schedule to help your children manage their regular daily routines. You will probably get a schedule from your classroom teacher, from your child's teacher, but you also wanna create a schedule at home where the children know, okay, I need to uh, log in by 8.30 a.m. to my Google Classroom to meet my teacher. So creating some type of schedule like that. Make sure our students get back to their regular routine of getting enough sleep. Um, I know that with my two boys, they have been obviously enjoying their summer. So now I have to get them ready to go to bed early because they're gonna be getting up early. Communicating with your school. So most of your classroom teachers are gonna be using Class Dojo, Remind, or email as a form of communicating with you. Don't be afraid to communicate with the teacher. If you have to communicate um, as often as you need to, make sure that you're communicating so that the teachers are able to help you in any way. So Class Dojo is a free app that you can put on your phone. Remind is a free app. Most of us already have Class Dojo or Remind on our apps already. So um, I'm pretty sure you're already familiar with those platforms. So now we're going to share our thoughts on how are you preparing your family for remote learning. So I heard um, parent pods are examples of what some parents and some communities are doing. Parent pods are uh, this, for example, you may have a neighbor who has two children at home and you have a single child who is in say second grade. You have to go to work every day. You don't want to leave your second grader at home by themselves to navigate through remote learning. So you may decide to bring your second grader next door to your neighbor's house to learn with their two children. Those are parent pods. So you may wanna create a parent pod with some trusted individuals, maybe some family members that you know also have children around the same age as your children. And this is really to benefit parents who may have to leave the home and go to work. Or you may ask a relative to visit your home. You may create a schedule uh, so that you will have at least some type of adult supervision inside the home, even though, once again, there will be live instruction in front of your teacher on the computer face-to-face. -face. There's nothing like having an adult present. All right, so let's pause here. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and I'm gonna give you guys a chance to share what kind of ideas you guys are doing currently right now with preparing your children for remote learning. So let's take about four minutes maybe to share out. So go ahead and unmute yourself. 
Okay, so go feel free to share what uh, strategies you all are doing at home to prepare for remote. Hey, Regina, it's Tanisha, and hey, I think you mentioned it how your kitchen table was just the hub for everything in your life and your family's life. So I think it's important, and you create the special dedicated space in your family room. I'm gonna do that too, mm -hmm. um, because my um, one one of my daughters was in her bedroom, and she was pretty okay in there. But again, I think she became more of a loner in there. Mm -hmm. um, the other one was at the dining room table. So now I am buying two new desks, even though one will be at school. But I expect that at any given moment they may go ahead and shut down the, right. the Catholic schools. And they'll mm -hmm. be at home. But I'm just going to make sure I create that dedicated space. I'm yeah. putting a box so that the cell phones can go inside the box during the school day. And I just want to make sure that they have that dedicated space and that routine and not lounging in their bed or on the couch while they're doing work. So that, that's I think that's good. important. Absolutely. That's good. Thanks for sharing that out, Tanisha. Um, anyone else have any ideas of what you are going to do in your home that you can share? I think what I'm going to change is, is to put up a visual schedule so he mm -hmm. can check off to say whatever those times. So I'll wait for all the teachers to send me out their schedule mm -hmm. and the time with do the feedback hours on Friday. So that mm -hmm. way he won't be saying, oh, you know, they're available. And then I have to kind of stop what I'm doing and then go kind of check in, whereas he could do more of a checklist. And then I can kind of just peek in and see where he's at. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, trying to handle what I have to do with remote learning and what he's doing, mm -hmm. it seems to kind of get a little bit challenging when you're working from home as well. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. Maybe a busy schedule that may help so he can know where he's at in the day and I can know. Mm -hmm. That's good. And Arlanda, you actually brought up a really good point because we do have some parents who are going to be working from home. And working from home and trying to navigate the remote learning with your children, we learned back in March and May, it's very hard to do. And it, uh, you will have to be pretty structured in navigating that. Thanks for sharing that out. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, I was going to say, so um, I'm pretty sure your district offered this as well, but um, they offered the summer enrichment, you know, to take care of that summer gap, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I had my little guy participating in that. And so, of course, you know, allowing a little more leeway in that context, meaning like, so in between his live instruction and then, you know, he do the individual instruction, mm -hmm. like sometimes he would want to get on and play video games and, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So that absolutely will not be allowed um, during the school year, um, <laughs> during the, the former life school year. Um, so, you know, just really trying to set the scene that, yes, you may be at home, but this is still from, from 8 a.m. until 3 or mm -hmm. 2 or whenever the schedule is listed, it's still school time. Yes, we're going to have the recreation. Yes, we're going to have lunch, but still being able to set those boundaries as far as like, yes, this is still school time. And yes, all of us, we will be here at home. Um, my institution they already decided to go remote. Just being able to set the stage, we're home. And so I think that that's going to be very important as well as scheduling and things of that nature that some of the other parents have mentioned. But yeah, I, I just, I just kind of chuckled when you asked that question. I'm like, yeah, that absolutely will be changing. <laughs> Yes, definitely. And speaking of lunch, some other parent had mentioned um, they were going to make the lunches for their kids, like in lunch boxes and put them in the refrigerator so that the kids could easily have uh, access to the lunch. So just one little tip. Uh, Tony, Tony had her hand up. I had an idea for my teen because social is really important for teens. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have a study pod for her. So she has two of her close girlfriends. I've already talked to their parents. At least I talked to one of their parents, and I'll talk to the other one this week. Mm -hmm. But we want to have study pods for my teen girl so that after remote learning is over, she can kind of maybe work side by side on Zoom with her, with her uh, girlfriends and get work done that way. So that was the idea I had for my teen. That's good. That's a great idea. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and then later on, um, before we leave, we are going to be sharing some additional parent resources involving tutoring. So we are going to be offering tutoring for our kids too, because one of the things that 
I'm passionate about is just making sure that our kids don't fall behind. Um, so offering those tutoring services for the kids is gonna be critical as well. All right, anyone else? Okay, so let's finish up. I will share the screen again. We'll finish up this presentation. So basically in order for our students to also remain successful with remote learning, here are their exp expectations. And we just mentioned, we heard LaShawn um, mentioned this as well. Tanisha mentioned this as well. So here are their expectations, making sure that the children know they have to be in attendance every day. So daily attendance, they have to be engaged and asking those questions. So teachers are gonna show the uh, to students how to either ask questions in the chat box in the event if you have some shy students, but these are some expectations that we want our kids to do. Completing those assignments by the due date, being organized and prepared, making sure that they have all of their supplies near whatever area of the house they are going to be learning from, staying focused and reporting any concerns to their teacher, and then getting enough rest and continuing continue with the self-care. All right, so BB King, who's my favorite bestie friend in the whole wide world. I'm actually not being very honest. I actually just uh, found this quote and I thought this was very fitting um, for what we are getting ready to do with our children. So BB King once said, the beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you. So we have to understand the fact that even though our children are going to be learning at home, they still have a lot of skills that we can build off on and our kids are resilient and I, ha I just know that our kids will be successful with remote learning because we're gonna build off of those skills that they already have. No one's taking that from them. They're coming back to school with some skills, even though we might have to dust them off a bit, but they still have skills from what you've taught them as parents, from what their teachers have taught them last year or over the summer. And we're gonna build off of those skills because they're not gonna lose if we continue to be involved. All right. All right, so here are some of our parenting resources that we wanted to share with you today. Um, so we have the Thinking Cap, um, which is my brother, Robert James, he's an engineer, and he specializes in high school tutoring. So he teaches chemistry, physics, um, trigonometry, he does ACT, SAT college prep, so you can reach out to him. The email is here, robert75j at hotmail.com. And then another resource for you is the Red Learning Zone um, that we have here where we are offering tutoring Monday through Friday, 4 to 8 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and then Sunday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So you can reach out to us uh, via the email here, redlearningzone at gmail.com. That's red with two Ds. Um, tutoring services are virtual or in person. So just some resources to offer um, to the parents. And once again, we will share this presentation so that you'll be able to get that information. So now we are going to open it up for questions. We have a few more minutes left but I wanted to give you the opportunity to ask any questions. And I think Tony may uh, want to give some closing remarks, um, but I just wanted to take this time to honestly thank you for attending. Um, we are so appreciative of your time on a Saturday morning. I know as a parent, my Saturdays are my laundry time, uh, getting ready for whatever activity you have during the day. So your time is so precious to us and we really appreciate you taking the time to spend an hour with us on a conversation about building resilient children. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Leticia, for having me. I really, really appreciate this opportunity. Um, I could talk all day, but I'm not because I know we got things to do. So thank you so much and reach out to me if you need any support. We'll let you know when our next parent forum is gonna be. And I will unmute you all if you all have anything you would like to share. 
Well, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. This is Lashawn again. So there, along the same lines as one of the parents here, it was you know, making sure that there's a quality and robust education. Um, I guess for me, it would be more so um, being able to share concerns about an equitable education, right? So both of my uh, students are part of the Montessori program. And we also have our gifted program. And so we've been informed by the district that, of course, if you choose remote only or even the hybrid model, that remote instruction will be provided by any student, I'm sorry, any teacher in the district. Um, but I'm quite sure that the gifted program will not be given any just traditional uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to um, get some suggestions on advocating um, to the district in that way so that, you know, the Montessori students can also be with the Montessori teachers rather than a traditional mm -hmm. and learning path is a little different, very similar to the gifted program. And so I'm just debating that it will be that I have already written the district and, you know, voiced, you know, that request, but just wanted to put that out there to, to see if there's any other suggestions. Sure, I can actually answer that for you, LaShawn. So um, just to speak to that, I know that in, uh, and that's a very good question because one thing we are going to see, and this is um, the reason why I really wanted to reach out to the parents to offer just the resources for tutoring because we're going to see that we're going to have children who um, we our children learn in different ways. We have diverse learners. We have children with IEPs, children with 504s. We have children in a gifted program who need to be accelerated. We have children all in between. And I think one of the, the most important things that I could probably suggest is that we have to make sure that those students are getting the additional resources. So you wanna make sure that they're having that one-on-one -on -one, um, teaching with their student. Teachers have the ability to split their class and some school districts are actually doing this where they're splitting their classes because we are virtually remote so that the class sizes are smaller. With the smaller class size, you will get more individual um, academic interventions for each child whether they're in the accelerated, the Montessori um, program, uh, whether they are in a self-contained classroom. So a lot of the teachers, they're gonna be utilizing their uh, other assistant teachers, which we call our paraprofessionals. So our paraprofessionals are gonna be in the classrooms as well, working with small group instruction. Teachers are gonna have small group instruction, but the very first thing I would say is, make sure you reach out to your teachers. Write those letters, Get that email written out to your teachers so that they understand what your needs and concerns are for your children this year. Because what we don't want is we don't want any of our children to fall through the cracks. So you want to make sure that you're reaching out. And that's I'm glad you brought that up, LaShawn, because I know that um, we, we tend to think that all of our kids are learning at the same pace. Our kids are going from A to Z at different paces uh, uh, on their own, basically. So you will have kids learning at different paces and they will have different needs. So good question. All right, anyone else? Good morning, um, this is Felicia Houston. Um, thank you, Tony, for the invite, I appreciate it. Um, the only other suggestion, Regina, those are some great suggestions. I would suggest, I serve on a school board in my community. Mm -hmm. I would suggest you attend the school board meeting and get some other parents so that mm -hmm. you all can voice your opinions because then you have an act, you have a whole audience Absolutely. and usually when parents get on, we make, we make changes, um, you expedite that process. Mm -hmm. So I would just say um, if you haven't already attended any school board meetings and most of the school board meetings are virtually and that information is out there and to get on there and voice your concerns. Absolutely, Felicia. Thank you for sharing that. That is the key. Things that get done in numbers, we tend to see. So yeah, absolutely. Bring your parenting groups together. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you all so much, Tony. Call. You can take it away. Orlando, did you have a question? I don't actually have a question. I just wanted to say thank you for the resources and sharing. 
um, it was very informative. And I'm going to take these resources and share with other parents and other people throughout the community. Uh, and like she said, uh, going to the uh, board meeting does, girls, it does make one sound, one voice. And it's very helpful when parents are informed and you give resources like this. So when we do go to board meetings, we can have and to refer to to assist us to be able to speak and articulate our thoughts. Thank you very much. I'm gonna share the same resource again. I'm in special education, so I put the clip for the K to third, and those videos will help me with a visual to be able to share. You know, uh, so kids and parents can see, and I can share it through Class Dojo if you don't mind some of the uh, mm -hmm. the clip I seen when you have one of those resources and then the COVID. Absolutely. Um, I just think it's to the children. And this is just a great resource because a lot of times it's not that they don't want to do, they just don't know what to do. And something like this with this platform you and your sisters are doing, it's really helpful for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Arlanda. Thank you for being with us. Um, if you all want to put your email in the chat, we will email you the presentation and that way we can get that to you right away. Um, or just contact me via the email on the presentation and we'll make sure you get a copy of it. Absolutely. Look, guys, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. We, before we go, we want to let you know that mental health, help, hope with Sisters, say that about five times, right? <laughs> uh, we, we are here as a resource. And so if you know any other uh, speakers or ways to collaborate, we are open to that. Uh, we have been uh, doing this since May, and we have had virtual conversations about various topics, uh, minority mental health, as well as uh, recovery, which is coming up. And so we wanna continue the conversation. I'm gonna put our um, website link in the chat for you all, it's coming up right now. Feel free to look at any of our videos, anything that we can do to be a resource and help. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to thank you again, Dr. Red, <laughs> for your time this morning. It was wonderful. And uh, just let so you know, our next session, uh, uh, Leticia, did you want to say our next session date for oh, us? Oh, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what we want to do is um, we are going, it's going to be at the end of August. So we're having one more session. It's going to be Building Resilient children part two and we are going to be talking about social emotional wellness so again we are we want to expand a little bit we talked a little bit about it this morning just want to touch on that topic a bit more and that's what we're doing later on in the month of august again thank you thank we have you. no idea how much we appreciate you and uh, uh you all have a good oh, rest nice. of thank you leticia thank you Thank you, Nina. Thank you, Antonia. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Nice. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.